Hello and welcome to another episode of Anything Arduino. Today we are going to make, as I think, the ultimate multimedia controller. Uh, I've wanted to do this for so long, I don't know, some projects I just keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward, uh, but today I feel it is time to do this project. Uh, so what's what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the code that we made in episode 5. If you remember we used the Arduino Leonardo to make a to convert the Leonardo into a multimedia keyboard. So by default the Leonardo can you can be used as a regular keyboard. Uh, and we did some changes in the Arduino core which added the the multimedia function keys. So play, pause, volume up, volume down, next, previous, all those good to have keys. Um, but we're not going to use the Leonardo. We are going to use its uh, little sister or something, the miniature version of the Leonardo, the Pro Micro. So the Pro Micro has the same chip, a 80 Mega 32U4, which in itself has a USB support. So that means that we can use the onboard USB port as a USB device. So that's how we make the keyboard. So we're gonna make use the Pro Micro because it's small and fits better in uh, small boxes, which we are going to make. Uh, and to make the controller interface, we are going to use a rotary encoder uh, so we're gonna learn how to use this one as well uh, so but first things first you if you haven't already you really need to go and watch uh, episode 5 uh, where we make all the changes to the code really you need to go and watch episode 5 uh, because I'm not gonna go through that again it's a 20 minute video so Go and watch that and I'll wait here and uh, we'll continue when you're back. P press pause and go, watch that. Press, there's a link somewhere here. Okay, you're back, you watched episode 5. Right, so now we go and look at the pin configuration of the rotary encoder and how we can use that in our uh, controller. So. The rotary encoder we are going to use have five pins, uh, three on the bottom, if we see that, and two on the top, and those are just soldering pads for to get it stuck on uh, a PCB or similar. So the two uh, pins on the one side is for the push button. So every time you push this there is a connection here so um, just a regular push button nothing special here now the three pins on the bottom is for the turning uh, effect so there is a small click when you turn it and this is Unfortunately, it's not as simple as two push buttons, one to the left and one to the right. Instead, uh, it is kind of like this. Um, so inside here, let's say we have kind of a cogwheel. That is, when we turn the knob, this cogwheel is turned. Now, there are two push buttons here. So these are called A... B, C, I believe is the correct order. And uh, so each of these, so there's a push button here on A that goes up like that. And then there's a push button here that goes up like this. So one push button here, one push button here. And every time we turn this wheel, they are both pressed at the same time. 
uh, not at the same time, but they are both pressed. So if we look here, just a close up of the of when it here's A and then B is pressed. So when we turn counterclockwise, B is pressed first and then A just a short while after. So a short while after it will look like A and B like that and then even later B will be released and A will st still be pressed. So one, two, three. So this means that by calculating the time from when A and B are pressed we can determine both which which way we are turning the knob because if we turn clock uh, no, this was clockwise and if we turn counterclockwise it will be A first and then B so it will go the other way so we by doing this we can do we can see both direction and speed um, so but this does so we can't handle the the rotary encoder as just a normal push button so we have to do some mathematical work for this to work maybe we should go through the concept so the concept is a box in this case I thought of a square box with a s r large rotary dial in the middle um, where this one should be of course um, and the commands should be so when you just turn the dial it will be volume up and down and press will of course be uh, play pause I also want to be able to press down and then turn and that will be so press and turn will be next and previous I decided to make the box 7 by 7 centimeters that gives me big enough uh, for a good feel I think and also there's uh, g well enough room in it for the electronics. The hookup is quite simple. The middle pin is connected to ground. Uh, in our case we put the left pin on pin 6 and the right pin on pin 7 of those of those three pins here now the two pins over here is for the button and we connect one pin to pin 9 and the other pin to ground as well now this circuit how we have made it and how we are going to use it in the code is we're going to use the internal pull up uh, resistors in these three pins uh, if you don't want to use the internal pull ups and want to have real pull ups instead then you need to add two resistors or three actually and those all need to be connected to voltage plus and connected to each one of these so these are pull up resistors so uh, internal pull ups or these ones and there we have it so now <coughs> I think we should look at some kind of code to use.
for this. So a Google search for rotary encoders for Arduino uh, gets you quite quickly to the Arduino playground uh, ro for rotary encoders. And here is lots of useful information and quite a lot of libraries and one after the other they are they seem to be really awesome um, but to just do a simple use of the of the uh, rotary encoders I found the simplified example here and I thought we'd just copy this because this does in software exactly what I showed you on paper before so it checks if the pin A if it's high or low and it checks if it was high or low before and then it checks the pin the uh, pin B to see if that is high and low and depending on what it finds out it either uh, reduces or uh, adds to the encoder zero position. So really simple. So let's add this to a new sketch. We need to do some things. We need to change this to pin 6 and pin 7 because these are the two pins we are using. We want to use the internal pull-ups. So we need to change in the void setup. We need to change the pin mode to input pull-up. So let's see, we take out our little controller here and we turn it counter or clockwise. And it is jumping all over the place. You need to turn really much to get it down so now we're in the negative numbers and then we go back up yeah okay so it works but not perfectly um, I'm going to start coding with this anyway so expanding on this code I am not going to do the whole coding process on video uh, I'm instead going to explain this program that I've done. So this code uses the example debounce code from the uh, examples. Basics, I believe. No, digital, yeah. Debounce, that sketch. And it also uses the example code for rotary encoders, the one that we just copied from the Arduino Playground. And also it uses the Arduino core changes that I made and showed. I didn't make them, but I showed how to do them in Anything Arduino episode 5, which you can watch there. So let's go through the code. Um, the B state, that's for the button. And this is also for the button. And this is the button. There's a lot of, of states for the button just to to make sure if it is pressed or not so these are all from the debounce sketch and then we have the long press delay so if we hold if we push the button and hold it longer than 50 milliseconds then it is a, a button press but if we hold it longer than 500 milliseconds or half a second then it's a long press so that's what these are for and here we have our encoder pins. And this is something I had to... Because as you saw when we just checked this code, it was jumping a bit too much. So I actually... Uh, this one, you will see in a moment, is... So for any command to be done, it needs to be... a double command so it, I need to have two uh, clockwise clicks on the dial uh, for it to become a, uh, a real scenario uh, 
plus and counterclockwise I need two for it to be a minus so we'll get to that soon uh, here we have our uh, setup so we have our encoder pins A and B and the button they are all using the internal push pull up uh, just so we don't need that extra component we don't there are lead pins here we're not using them right now and if you looked at so in this you see here this code is very similar to this code here so it's the same code except that within each if so we, within each if here if digital read and encoder zero position and minus minus or plus plus I've added if last direction is zero which is let's say left and or counterclockwise and this is clockwise or plus so if last direction is zero then then we actually get, mm, change the result and then we either it's it is zero or not we set the last direction to zero so if we come in and the last direction was one it will be set to zero and then the next time the encoder zero position will be lowered uh, and then we make the volume up down decision with the last button state I use the last button state because but it, it's such a short amount of time so I can just use that so I don't need to get more variables in here uh, so if the last button state is high then the button is is not pressed uh, which means that uh, any encoder if the encoder values are changed uh, we are going to uh, decrease or increase the volume so we use the remote dot decrease from again episode 5 um, and then we make the next and previous de decision and this is also outside the check for the button so here we see we actually check if the button state is low it needs to be low so it needs to be pressed but also if the last d uh, if millis mi minus last debounce time is longer than the long press delay so longer than 500 milliseconds then any encoder changes will either do the remote previous or remote next so changing tracks and then we check the button and this is technically this is the debounce code um, with just a few additions for the for debugging so if 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 the reading is the is changed from the last button state and if the reading is low then the the button is pressed and then we start the last debounce time timer and then we check if it's a long press and if it's a short press and if it is a short press so it's it's less not it's shorter than the long press delay but longer than the debounce delay then uh, it is a play or pause command so we either press play or pause and well then we just set the last button state and encode the last value and then we start all over and so let's see this in action so we are done there so first let's look in the uh, serial monitor so we go volume up we are mostly ups and then we start going down and there are quite a few ups in the beginning and then it now you can't see but I actually am changing the volume here and if we just press quickly we get a play pause we hold it long and we release then we get a long press um, which doesn't do anything but it, it is there so long press and we turn is next 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 a few previous and previous 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 
a few things that have been added uh, just to make sure that no uh, strange commands will be sent. Uh, so the last direction I showed you and then remote.clear function needs to be called every time you send a any function to the remote you need to add the remote.clear afterwards. So I missed that before. So I've added that everywhere. And in the previous and next, just so you won't switch songs or, or, or episodes or whatever you want to switch next and previous to fast, I a actually added a 500 millisecond delay here. So once you actually do the uh, previous and next, there's a half a second delay there. And we need to stop here. Uh, we now have a functioning uh, multimedia controller with a um, uh, rotary encoder. Uh, and I had planned to make, uh, to show how I made these uh, ongoing projects r right now of enclosures. Uh, but since this is called anything Arduino, I'll do that in a separate video. Uh, so it's not perfect. Uh, it, it does jump this code as we've written now. It does jump when you want to decrease volume. It sometimes does a uh, volume up. I think that for volume that isn't as critical. When it comes to next previous, it could be a bit more of a nuisance. Um, so I, I'll look through some libraries and see if I find a good alternative. Um, yeah. Uh, so hope you learned how to use the rotary encoder and how that works and hope you find some good projects for you to make with it. Let me know in the comments below and if you like this please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.